Hello, everyone. This is Yusai. Welcome to another edition of Let's Talk. Well, today is a very special day, everyone, and thank you for joining me. Today is a historical day because my guest today is an actress, a beautiful, gorgeous dancer, and she has many firsts in her agenda of all her life, and we've been following her. But today, today, she gets to add one more to her very first, a new title today. It's Sports Illustrated swimsuit cover model. Let's welcome Lena Bloom. Hey y'all! Look at this cover. Ah! Oh my God, y'all! Go get your copy. Well, Lena, let's talk about this. Everybody online, news channel, everybody's calling you right now. You're going off the hook, and I know you're giving me precious time here. And I love all the moments we have shared together. I think it's so special. I want to share that moment with everyone. But before we go there. Tell me how you feel right now. I feel immortalized. That is the word I'm using today. Immortalized. Incredible. A little girl, back where you're from, twenty some years ago. She looks at this cover. What would she say? She would say, "Baby, you did it." She would say, "You did it. It was all worth it, and you did it." That's what she would say. Wow. You know, it's, you said that it's all worth it. That means there was a journey. There was definitely a trial and tribulation along the way. Give us a little bit of um, this journey. Have you ever thought this moment would ever happen in our society, number one, and two, for you? No, and no. I thought that I was probably born in a time where I would probably inspire someone to do this but actually being the person to actually get my feet into the sand and take the photos. And then one day to actually be on the cover while my feet is in the sand, that is a whole different vibration that um, I am learning to believe in. I'm learning to see, I'm learning to manifest in. Um, anything is possible. You don't know who's watching you. So just, so just dream big, honestly. And the reason I did not mention that Lena Bloom is actually the very first transgender woman to be on the cover because it is not the actual focus of my conversation with you. I know it's historical, I know it's meaningful, but what I want my audience and I want people to know is you. And to know that, we do need to know a little bit of trial tribulations. I know how hard it is as a mixed race person and having to go through sexuality challenges and, and understanding and being Asian, half of you, I know how hard it is to be part of the LGBTQ plus community. When I moved from Taiwan to America, confused already learning a language and then trying to discover who I am, that wasn't easy. And I know the last decade, working for Sports Illustrated changed me because I get to celebrate women and never have I ever thought today I'm celebrating a transgender woman. And this is a new normal. I want you to take us from when it was not normal to the new normal that everyone has no choice but a step. And I'm gonna say your word, period. Period. Yes, baby. Um, I grew up on the South side of Chicago um, where it is segregation, where queer bodies cannot live and thrive. You have to only go to one part of the city to actually exist in public spaces. Um, I was growing up um, as, a, as a young child facing so much adversity in segregated locations around the city. My dad was a black man raising a child on his own, um, giving me the only love that he understand, which is tough love. That tough love turned into an embodiment of full love. Um, my mom was deported out of the country when I was two years old. I didn't get a chance to actually tell her mama. Um, and I was just constantly facing with homelessness, constantly dealing with where I'm going to eat, what I'm going to sleep. You know, the trials and tribulations that Black and brown bodies constantly face on the day to day of just trying to navigate ourselves in a society that does not see us as existing or see us as full humans. This moment is truly, um, this moment is truly mind, mind bottling 
um, about where I've come from. You know, there's really no words, but to, you know, there's only a few words on this earth that can really, really give this, give this moment justice. And that's why I said, you know, this is a true, like, this is a true moment in time, you know, to come from Chicago, to move here, to also deal with homelessness here, to deal with the fashion world telling me I'm too big, I'm too small, I'm trans, I'm black, I'm Asian. You would never make it come back in six months or you think you can model, no, 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 no. I have literally heard it all. And you always hear that about these stories, especially around black models about people saying, oh, we already have a black model. Oh, like we, the, I don't know if you fit the look. You know what I mean? I've heard it all, but you know what? It added to my armor because I knew I was bigger than that. I was bigger than these little small things. And I knew that it was just temporary. I knew that being homeless at this age, at that age was all temporary. I knew that I will find my, I will find my, my, my crew. I will find my community and it would, I will be embraced. And that's all I needed to be, is to be embraced and be embraced the people that look just like me and you. I was constantly looking for people like me and I found the ballroom scene. The ballroom gave me something that the world could not and that is love, authentic love, genuine understanding of the, of, of the realism of love. So um, I was walking balls, selling face, getting cash prize and trophies, just off learning about healthy competition. You know, I couldn't go on the sports team. I couldn't go and try out to the debate team. Those spaces were not available for me. The idea of me, even that is just, it would be a disgrace to the team. So I went where I was welcomed, where I was loved, where I could be around people that taught me about who I am and where I come from, which is a true legacy in itself. So um, here I am now living in New York City and I'm going after my dream. I'm going after what I believe in and not just doing it beautifully, but doing it with a message, doing it with a story, doing it with the words that could change the world, you know? So I am just a little baby right now. And this moment represents, you know, the baby that's inside me, little Lena that's inside me that can look at this and say, girl, you looked at this magazine in 1997 when Tyra's on the cover, you were looking into your future. You were looking into your future. And to have Tyra be in that moment to let me know that you are now, this is your moment, really gives me the wings that I deserve to just fly. And I am flying, you know what I mean? I come from rich culture of Filipino and Black culture, like this embodiment of survival is in my veins and um, it just means so much more to me because you got to photograph the photo to be on the cover. Like- we'll about that. We definitely wanna talk about that. One of the things that you said just now that, that I wanna echo and, and, and celebrate you is this, that you said through the trial and tribulations that you had to build your armor and you use this as your allies to celebrate with you. But one thing I can tell you is this, you know, people say all the trial tribulations, all the hardship that comes to you builds you and makes you stronger. I don't believe in that philosophy. Mm. I believe in this. You are strong to begin with. Therefore, you can handle all that trial and tribulation. Oh. And that ideology is what you are to me. Even when I listen to all different podcasts and interviews you have done, you're always so gracious. And you say, these things happen. I understand, I take them and I'm growing from them. And that is such a nice way to say, F you people, you are an asshole to me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm there with you. And I love to be able to say, thank you guys for beating me up in college or, or, or lock me in a locker room in high school. But you know what? You didn't make me stronger. It just make you sound weaker. Mm. And you, the path that you're gone through is because you were strong already, Nina. You are strong today as you were when you were five, six, seven years old. You were as strong as you were when you were homeless, as you're strong as you are in your New York apartment and on big screens on movies. And I want you to celebrate that because that is the reason. That is the pivotal reason what MJ Day, the editor-in-chief of Sports Illustrated, some called me and said, we have a spot left open for our trip. 
should we bring Lena? And that was a trick question, by the way. She already decided. <laughs> so just so you guys know, as a photographer, as a model, none of us know who will be gracing the cover. We show up and we do our very best. And trust me, I know the models are excited to be on the cover. Photographer like me, a gay photographer shooting for a magazine that's well loved and beloved by straight men for decades and decades, and be able to be part of the journey with MJ Day and said, you know what? Our audience is broader than that, bigger than that. It's about inclusion, it is about diversity. That was my education in the last four years when she took out. You put a cherry on top. When your name came up, I cried. I literally said, is it possible? Is it possible for a gay man to shoot a transgender woman? And she is half black, half Asian, and she is someone I can look up to and said, she is strong. And that was the moment I thought, maybe, maybe we'll make history. And we did. Just merely having you in a magazine was historical. When we first announced it, when I saw them, the Instagrams and the social media, everybody went crazy. The pictures were gorgeous. And audience, everyone was listening, just so you know, we had no clue. That moment was just the start of this moment. Yes. Do me a favor. Tell everyone, what was it like when you first got the phone call for MJ to invite you to the franchise? Oh my God. Um... My agents called me and when he told me, I just didn't believe him. I thought it was just like, oh yeah, maybe they want to see me, but me getting selected to be in the magazine, like, wow, are we really there right now? Are we really about to have this moment? Like, are we going to really have this moment? Or are we just going to like, oh, we're just going to like, you know, talk about it. And it's just going to be a start of a conversation. No, we are putting you on a flight next week. You thought is going to be shooting the magazine and <laughs> we are about to have a moment Right afterwards, I got on the phone with MJ and I was in disbelief about the idea that I was even on the phone with her, that she wanted to have a conversation with me. And we didn't talk about Sports Illustrated. We talked about what people talk about. We talk about everyday things that we go through, what she's going through through her motherhood, what I'm going through with my father, what I'm going through with working in this industry. We were talking about realism. The power of realism, the power of just being human and understanding the intersections of where we come from and who we are and how we come together to create a moment that will last forever. And the, the cherry on the top of that was the fact that she was like, the body that you are in are so beautiful. Do not change it. Do not change your body. We want all of you, every inch of you inside and outside. I was like, what about the politics? What about the radical? We want it all. We want it all. That, that for me, I've never heard anyone in this industry say that, to own that, not just off one phone call, but a continuum of conversations, a continuum of, of meeting and talking and, and manifesting opportunity, not for just for me, but for culture. She believes that and it's in the magazine. And that is what I'm a part of. This message, this, this moment is, is, is much more bigger than me. It's about every single woman in the magazine that showed up that day that represented their home, their community, where they come from in the world, who they are and what they believe in. That is messaging. That is what the future looks like right here, me and you together. This is what the future looks like. And that's what she wanted to portray. And that's what she wanted to tell in this story. And it's so powerful. It's so powerful. This is why I love doing what I do. You know what I mean? And being born in a time when I can do it. And the idea that I know so many trans bodies of experience could not have this moment, could not imagine this would happen in their lifetime. And they are still here on earth, living and breathing and moving that is, that's mind boggling that just 10 years ago, my ideas and my, the way I'm speaking was non-existent in any shape or form in any space in the world. And the fact that I'm taking up space in this moment, I'm taking up the space of my body and I'm taking up the space around my body. And I'm uh, giving people the permission to do it and not just to do it, but do it bigger and better. 
you know, I remember when we first got on the phone together, MJ yes. said, listen, I want you to make sure you connect with Lena. I want to make sure you capture at her very best. And she told me, she's lovely, but I can tell she is nervous. And I said to her, she better be nervous because she is going to be holding the torch for two communities that I am part of, exactly. LGBTQ+, and the Asian community in celebrating AAPI. And that is so important. And it was in the midst of Black Lives Matters. It was the beginning of Stop Asian Hate. Yes. And as an Asian man, as a gay Asian man, I struggled through that time not knowing where do I stand and how do I support my community. And I remember us talking about this. And there was one moment on our call, we both realized what we're doing now and what we're about to do is exactly what we're supposed to do, to mm. stand within our community, to celebrate our community by doing, by finding allies like MJ, like Sports Illustrated Swimsuit to be part of our community. And I say that, and I know everybody say, welcome to Sports Illustrated. Can I tell you, you welcome them to come into your life. Now uh, that's the paradigm. One want people to start thinking about. It is not about modeling for a magazine that accept you. That's not it. We invited you. We asked you to celebrate with us. So mm -hmm. to you, I thank you for having the courage to do that. I know we cried so many times and I don't want to start crying again. We cried so many times because you and I fought to be and look for people like us who think like us in the work we do as liberal, as accepting fashion is, and let's get real. It is the most judgmental, the most debilitating and self-deprivating industry, the hate and the pain. And I will say this to Dana, it's so important for you to know this. I don't think you know. I look at you today. And I remember that I too had to hide my sexuality to get work. And I know people are like, oh, Lena's on the cover, oh my God. People don't understand the courage, the power that you had to put in yourself to get there. Listen guys, Lena's gorgeous, but she is just like every woman. When she gets in front of my lens, we all have insecurities. We all worry about which angle we look best. You know that you are just like everyone else. You were nervous and you want the best and you put so much pressure on yourself that day. It's easy to back in the glory and I want people to know the vulnerability of you. Because listen, Lena is a badass and she puts up all this fun that she's a badass. And I'm gonna break that badass. I'm gonna tell you guys a little what happened on set. The cover that you're seeing right now, the gorgeous cover you're seeing right now is probably the photo she, she was most here with when we were shooting. Not because you didn't feel beautiful, not because you weren't on the most gorgeous light, because you just had lunch. Ah! I can't! <laughs> I, ah! Ah! Exactly! Yo, it is what it is, you know? Like, I have to admit it. I have an eating disorder. You know what I mean? I have an issue with eating. I have an issue. This business has been policing my body for so many years. And I just wanted to just enjoy this moment. But you know what? I had you there. I had you there to remind me who I am. I had you there to remind me what we are doing. When we were even on the phone, you were telling me, uh-uh, when you show up to the set, Bring your A game. Know what you are representing. Know that we are we are pillars in our communities and we have to do our part. And that that changed my life. And then when I was on set, you was like, I, 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 remember what I said? Remember what I said? You are beautiful. You are a body. You are representing women out here in the world. You're representing trans women. You're representing Asian women. You're representing Black women. Represent every inch of you in that moment. I had forgot because you know what? I, in my mind, I had the world in my mind telling me, oh, you just ate, you're not about to eat. No, I need to eat. I need to feel, I need to feel the food go throughout my body and go into my bloodstream to know that I'm alive. And you reminded me that, you know what I mean? You reminded me, and right after that, me and Jason went to go eat, order like four pizzas. <laughs> Remember? 
you know, that's what I, I want to share that story because I know how we are. I know how we are, especially models when they get in front of my camera and they worry about these little things that 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 the no, little notes of nose in our brain, right? And yes. I think it's so quintessential to celebrate this is a photo after a meal. This is literally a photo after a full after. meal. Oh. This, you know what you said to me? You're like, I'm going to eat a lot because I don't have to worry. I'm going to be wearing one piece. And then that became the cover. And guys, when you get the magazine, when you flip open the magazine, you're going to see her in this sheer knit outfit. It's so stunningly gorgeous. It was like watching a music video. Just I remember. Coming alive. And and I remember that moment for you was really, really important. I want you to share that moment with everyone. What is it like for you to relinquish yourself and allow us to celebrate your body? I know that's not always easy. I mean, it's 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 non-existent until now. You know what I mean? Like it's non-existent until now. The idea that for so many years my body was not respected. It was not appreciated. It was not seen in any space on the earth. And I already was got the okay to be there. And I forgot that. I'm thinking I'm still have to compete for my spot. No, I'm here. I'm already representing who I am and my community. I just need to just love myself in this moment. And yes, I was very nervous. I mean, you said you are an amazing photographer and you give the most incredible direction literally that's why i call you my sensei because literally i think i'm going on set i'm thinking like i'm going to be this model like i know who i am i get up on the stage like uh-uh that way uh-uh. and i'm like what what do you mean and you're like look at the photo and i was like yes because it's also was my first time ever shooting on a beach it was my also my because i'm so that's such scary territory for me because when you go to the beach, how many trans bodies do you see on the beach running around happy and happy and full of life? Never. I never saw that representation. So I was in a very sensitive, sensitive space. You know, I was sensitive space of my body, you know, in a moment when I'm making history and I have to remind myself like, girl, you got this far, just keep going. You got people around you that love you, that support you, that understand the value of this moment. Just make them proud. And that's exactly what I did. You know, I had my little hiccup, but we are humans and we are allowed to have those moments. But I just had to understand that no matter what opportunity comes, I have to know that I deserve to be here in this moment and I am beautiful. I already arrived. I just got to stay here and, and just be lucky and understand how lucky you are. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a lucky Asian black trans woman that seeing what I needed to see to get to me where I'm at. Because everything that was put in my life put me in a position to be on this podcast right now talking about you about history, talking to you about being Asian in popular culture. And I give you so much respect to you for just going after your dreams to just say, I'm gonna be a part of this. This is what I want for myself. Even if I have to like do this or do that, but we have to go through that. We have to be in those rooms of those important people, of those shallow people to understand our value, to understand how important we are. And we have to go through that. You can't have one without the other. And let's not forget, you are on the cover with two other yes. amazing, gorgeous models. You are sharing the cover in the spotlight with Megan Stallion. Naomi Osaka. Oh, and Naomi Osaka. Powerful. This moment is not just this moment of, oh, look, I got the only cover. This is a moment that literally says, here is my army. Hmm. This three is, of us. Three of you represent so much. I got the opportunity to shoot Naomi as well. And the thing what she has gone through the last six months, standing up to talk about mental health. issues, mental health, it's very much a taboo in the Asian culture to talk about that. Mm -hmm. She stood up for women, for Black women, for Asian women, and she loves fashion, and you and I love that. We love fashion. So I love that you get to grace the cover with her and share with her. And, and I, am, I am so overwhelmed with joy 
to be part of this community and be able to celebrate with you. And I can't wait, I can't wait to see what's next for you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I, I definitely need a lot more photos of you taking of me. Please take some more photos of me. We've already talked about this. You know what I mean? Um, who knows what's going to happen next? You know, I just, I have to live for this second, for this minute, for this day. You know, tomorrow is not promised, but you know what? What we did was make history and it lives forever. You know what I mean? Like this moment stays on this earth and lives forever. And I have to keep telling that to people because we don't have this representation a hundred years in the past, 10 years in the past, you know, 30 years in the past, we don't have this. We don't have anyone in a position where they're like, we're living forever. We're inspiring people forever. I have to go to a direct part of the world in a part to underground community to see folks like me in the dark. I want to be able to walk in broad daylight and be seen and see folks just like myself out here living our most authentic self, being true to who they are and representing who they, who they are, where they come from. Like our ancestors are, it's their wildest dreams to see where we are, where we are at and what we have done with our life. And don't forget that this is a global message, right? We are sending a global message. I got so many DMs from Philippines, because you know, I'm, I'm pretty well known in the Philippines for the shows I've done out there. Yeah. And it is a Catholic culture. It is a culture that is really difficult for transgender LGBTQ people. Um, yeah. But I gotta tell you, the flood, flood of DMs of people reaching out to me saying thank you. Because of you, they feel safe. Because of you, they see a chance. Right, and that's what Sports Illustrated has done now with MJ Day's mission has truly just begun because we talk about making this historical moment. What I want people to know is that this moment eventually should be the normal conversation that we're having. We should not be shocked that we see Lena on a billboard for something else, that we should not be shocked that these are the conversations we should be having. And I want, and I encourage that Asian countries and culture that I have been so lucky to be privileged with that see this moment and hope make change one small step at a time. I'm proud being a Taiwanese so much because the only Asian country that legalized gay marriage. Mm. You know, and I know that's a start, not just the beginning of a conversation. And I know how many Asian boys and girls, Thailand, Philippines, Singapore, Malaysia, they're watching you. Yeah. Indonesia, Southeast Asia, they love you. So it's not just about the US cover. This conversation is so important to me because it is about being Asian. It's about being Black. It is about being able to define where you belong and who you wanting to make your life. And those who are not, make an accomplice to what you're doing and call them out. And the biggest call out you've done is to say, I am going to embrace this moment and this moment take me where it needs to be, I'll take it. And now we talked about this. You even said, what does it mean to be in this magazine? And I could not explain to you because it's a decade of work of mine literally a decade of work. I've done Vogue, I've done Harper's. There are very few editor-in-chief and there's very few magazines will embrace our ideology, mm. right? Mm. Our understanding what inclusion is. And at the same time, respectfully of the culture. So I hope that people see you on this cover, see no boundaries, see no continents, and see that this is possible for every little young boy and girls out there. And not just speaking for the transgender community, but for anyone feels marginalized at some point. It's easy to sit here and say, oh, I'm a famous fashion photographer, but you, Lena, know me. We all have so much insecurity as we walk this path. And we need each other. Yes, we do. We need each other and we need this moment. And I thank you for this moment. Thank you. You know, um, we don't often get the chance to work with our own people. You know what I mean? This is really 
powerful for me growing up because my mom was deported out of the country. You know, a part of my Asian culture was taken from me. A part of who I am, I had to go out and look for and find. And every single Asian person that I met made me feel a little bit of home. You know, made me cooked for me, spoke to me, you know, told me words. So I got tatted on my arm. Maharkita means I love you. You know what I mean? Like it was the first word I learned. And um, I just, I, 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 I have to understand that on both sides of who I am comes from rich and royal blood. My ancestry of my Asian, the ancestry of my African blood is so rich. And that is so powerful that I can have both you know what I mean? And when we are being subjected to hate and subjected to pain and death in this world, when we put someone like that who exemplifies both on a cover or in an opportunity, you can show the world that there's also good in the world. Outside of the bat, there's still good. And this is how we do this. And this is how we keep the torch burning for us when we are lost in the dark. We're here. We are right here. And I want people to understand that when they listen to this podcast, know that the work is not just what Lena has been doing in front of the camera. The work is what she's doing to insist that she has the allies behind the camera and grow together and build together. Because honestly, you could have said, I don't feel comfortable with you, Sai, or I don't want to work with you, Sai. I hope she'll never say that. But, but she has the right. She has, she has the power to do that. Nobody forced you. To work with me. In fact, we asked you, and that's why we had a Zoom call, and the connection was instant. I mean, you and I are going to go somewhere. We're going to dance our heart out. Wait, that'll be next <laughs> week. We're going to be celebrating next yes, week. Yes, next week. Dance. Oh we are going to dance, and you're going to serve me. Face. You're going to teach me how to No, serve. when we was on set, when we were like just in our little break periods, when we were like, even after the set, we, our language, because we understand, we understand the banter, we understand the comedic timing, we understand like those little dry parts of like the, of the, of the, of the, of the conversation. We understand that because we have such lived experience of life and culture. And it's, 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 it's a combination of the pain that we have received because we have to put happiness on top of the pain. And we do that in everything that we do. Like you showed up on set with a speedo dancing. Like that is how you make the experience that much more richer because of those memories that you get to have and those moments we get to share. Like, it's just so powerful that we are literally we are in this moment. We are in this moment today. It's not going back. We're just moving forward.